Okay, excellent. All right, everyone. Um, I'm just going to kick this straight over so you can learn exactly how you can publish a website via email. Uh, take it away. Okay. Hey, everyone. Sorry, I wrapped the order. I've got to go very shortly. Um, yeah, so I put this on GitHub uh, a few months ago. It's, if Corey's is like a 10 technically, this would be like a negative five. It's more like a product, little producty thing, but I'll talk about some of the tech stuff uh, anyway. But yeah, so uh, in January, a friend of mine was uh, really wanting to create a website really fast and couldn't find anything to do it. So we built this thing in a few nights. Uh, that's the URL, if you're interested. I'll show you the site in a sec. Um, that's us, on Twitter of things. Um, so what is it? I'll let you, can everyone see that? All you do is you put a subject and put a con your content in your email. It could be pictures, <coughs> links to YouTube, text, or whatever. And then just send it to that address and it will reply back to you with a website link and you can go there and your content will be published. It's based on Medium. I'm sure everyone knows medium.com, so the, the way it looks uh, is very similar, just nice and minimalist. So you might be thinking, why the hell would you use this hackathon. for any reason? What's that? Hackathon. Yeah? Use it as a hackathon. So when we built it, we, uh, we didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> That we, we like to build things we don't know what they're for, it's fun. Um, but this site existed, uh, you guys all know Pastebin, I'm sure. This is a hugely popular site, but we noticed that surprisingly enough, their highest viewed posts are all emails, like leaked emails and that kind of thing. So we thought next that you guys are all familiar with these people, I'm sure. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of things in the media r regarding emails, particularly like David Beckham, this was back in January, but he had some interesting leaks come out. We thought, oh, maybe this could be a, an easy way for people to leak emails or something like that. And we were totally wrong. Um, so uh, since uh, the end of March, start of March, we've had, uh, I don't know, 40,000 users, uh, 140 countries, uh, and they're using it for all kinds of interesting things. So I just thought I'd show a few uh, examples. Um, this person put one of the results in an iframe and then, uh, so he could use his own domain, and he's made his own cultural tools website from it, which I thought was kind of cool. Um, some guy posting puzzles. Uh, this is uh, a few members of the Democratic National Committee in the US use this service now to do all their uh, rollouts for, I don't know what they do, tell each other things, <laughs> which I thought was kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, this was cool. This is a guy in one, some European country. He basically fell in love with this as a blogging platform, which I thought was kind of cool. But surprisingly, our country of biggest use is Saudi Arabia. Um, everything from prayer sharing to who knows what, some of them we don't want to read <laughs> with all the recent activity and stuff, so um, that's kind of interesting. Uh, if you use it to, uh, if you send to page plus and then anything you like, it will create collections for you as well. So you can, uh, this university was building up some collections so they could show uh, students like different stuff. This was just describing like tech products they could use and things. But it keeps it in a nice like collection for you. Um, this guy, if you go to his uh, Android page for his game, he didn't have a website. So you know how you'd have like the privacy policies and stuff? He just built his privacy policy with this. And it links directly to this, which we thought was kind of cool. Um, this was some French people trying to do like public journalism and ask corrupt politicians. I think there's a few of these. And this one was cool too. We've even got like this kind of thing happening. If anyone wants to know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we still don't know what this is for, but I'd sort of show some examples. So if you guys want to try this and, and you find some use case that you like, let us know. Um, people tweet about it and stuff. But yeah, so I'll go back to the actual 
tech related thing. So how does it work? As I said, this only took us like three nights and that was probably too long. Um, it's, it's just piecing together a bunch of little puzzle pieces. We wanted to try, like we build things all the time and we thought, you know, let's just go next level lazy and try and do the least of the least we could do. So, so we grabbed our Amazon and they've got their SES, like their email service, S3, which you all know, Lambda, which uh, I think there's been a few talks here on Lambda, so everyone should be familiar with that. And then Dynamo, because you have to use Dynamo and Lambda. Um, so basically, just you send an email, SES picks it up, puts it in S3, then that triggers a Lambda endpoint, which grabs the email out of S3, passes it, cleans it all up, and does all the nice stuff, chucks it in Dynamo, and then gives you back a reply email. Uh, a friend of mine's built a uh, little Chrome extension for Gmail. You see the little, uh, you see that? little PT down here? So I just thought I'd create one quickly. Hello, Briz.js, something, something JavaScript. <laughs> okay. So I'll just create a page, and publish. Live demos, always going to go well. Let's see what happens. Come on. It actually crashed earlier. Um, there we go. Great. So this is what you get back. Gives you the link to the site, uh, to the page. Also gives you links to delete it. We had a lot of requests for that. People were putting up things they didn't <laughs> want to stay up there. Um, yeah, if we uh, yeah. yeah, nice and basic. Um, te technically, it's no, you know, it's no mean feat. It's no like, you know, uh, nothing amazing. You could all build this. Uh, so, with that being said, we've also it's just on GitHub. Uh, let me just pull it up. I think I have the slide for the address. Oh, uh, that was just the. Uh, this is how simple it is. This is the Lambda uh, callback. It just runs like, yeah, four little functions and that's it. Uh, so if you've used Lambda before, this is really cool. Uh, it, the site, it can scale massively if it ever blew up. We don't have any costs at the moment. It's like a dollar a month and that's pretty much just email replies. Um, but uh, it's here if you guys want to clone it. There's no docs being like, there was no like intention of this to be well written or uh, have tests or anything like that. It was just, so if, yeah, if you want to pull it apart though and have a go, you could like spin one up pretty quickly. Uh, but I thought I'd just talk about some of the, how am I going for time? Yeah, right. Uh, some of the tech stuff that we found interesting along the way. Um, so if you've used Lambda before, we had a lot of pain in getting the endpoints to work with our domains. You know, if, uh, if anybody knows about that, I'd love to chat to you sometime. Um, so right now, the viewing of the site is actually done through Heroku. But all the codes there for the viewing site, we just haven't hooked it up. Um, so it's really cheap. Uh, it's just plug and play pieces. I think it's really great that uh, with something like Lambda and all these other AWS services, or uh, it's just getting more and more closer to just yeah plugging a chain of things in to get it to do some sort of function. Um, oh, we had a, a student from QUT do an XSS attack on us, and was the first one. He like changed my name in the bottom of the site to his, which I thought was kind of nice. <laughs> um, we've since fixed that problem. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but one of the things that side things that I thought this brought up, which is really interesting, is this kind of solves, uh, albeit possibly too slow, but it solves the user sign-on problem. So most people build apps and you know they're like integrating with Facebook or you sign up with your email address, and you have to go through the process because everyone has an email. Uh, we don't need sign-ups; it just works from the get-go. So one idea we've had that someone might want to try one day is we feel like you could build an API system that's built on top of email, where you send like complex addresses, which uh, basically equal like your REST endpoints and that kind of thing, and get the replies back. It'd be horrendously slow, but I feel like there'd be some interesting use case there. I'm not sure exactly what. 
Um, the other thing was what we found is uh, something to think about is we're kind of from a privileged country and we take for granted what we have in terms of infrastructure and in terms of uh, just education. And so we think a lot of the countries using this are predominantly mobile, predominantly don't have any uh, teaching in how to do web development. Uh, also, a lot of children, you know, in primary school who don't know how to do build websites or are too young to learn HTML and JavaScript. So, we thought this was an interesting wake up to see, like, oh, there's a whole demographic out there, a quite large one, that can benefit from things that are a lot, you know, very low tech for them. Um, yeah, if you want to use it and tell me if you find any good reason for it, let me know. <laughs> That's it. Thanks.